Hello, I'm Tyler and then I'm back with another paint over. This one was from the previous contest. Adam and I forgot to, uh, it didn't reach it to us, so I feel bad. So yeah, I'm just gonna go over and give my two cents on this because I feel bad at Iron Man. So overall, I think the, the main baseline issue with this is that uh, you're focusing too much on the uh, micro rather than the macro. You're, you're getting in there, you're focusing too much on itty bitty little textures and little shapes of things rather than kind of like the, uh, the whole. Uh, I think there should be a greater emphasis on lighting and atmosphere, and you need to start simplifying different elements. The texture is very uniform throughout the whole painting, whether you're doing the grass, the bark in the trees, or the rocks. Everything feels very samey, and as a result, things tend to get a bit stale. Now, I recommend definitely going over to Pinterest and looking at how atmospheric uh, painters or landscape painters in general are hand handling textures and simplifying different things because I think that is definitely would be to your greatest benefit in that regard is figuring out what to what to show and what to not show uh, and I'll, I would outright remove you know that the whole tree village thing that you have going on here on the left and just simplify that and basically kind of showing that it's a bit more of a dense densely wooded area your, your original image did have kind of like a very, a very similar atmosphere and tone for what I had imagined when, when you know, putting out the uh, description. But again, just showing a little bit too much and I want to bring in the focus. Focusing on that water dragon and simplifying the rest of your image. I want to make it things a little bit more mysterious, a little bit more moody and atmospheric. And so that's what I'm doing. And I'm, of course, the, the, the easiest way I can do that is to just start simplifying. And you had waterfalls and stuff in the background. I think that's a great touch. And I'm putting those back in now. But, it, you know, we can just, just breaking them down into a, uh, an organic pattern or a rhythm, you know, you know, a dynamic rhythm in terms of big, medium, small, and different kind of flowing shapes. I think that would be best. So we want to definitely avoid, uh, you know, super repetitive uh, shapes. Using the selection tool uh, and beginning to kind of glaze and paint with much larger brushes much earlier on, I think will definitely help you out rather than getting in there and getting too precious with individual things. So I'm using, of course, the marquee tool to make uh, selections and coming in there with huge, huge brushes, the biggest ones I can get away with. I definitely think that's the way to go, you know, particularly earlier on. And then kind of glaze and paint the light into the scene. So that's why I'm kind of darkening things up and I'm adjusting the levels again to strip your image of detail. Of course, take everything what I say with a grain of salt. This is just my humble opinion. It doesn't make it right, doesn't make it wrong, it is just that, my opinion. Now, what I'm doing here with the landscapes and stuff is I'm trying to make a more dynamic flow of shapes in them. I want to make them feel more organic, that there's turns, there's there's divots coming in and out of things, and there's erosion, there's, there's clumps, there's lumps. It, it feels way too streamlined and simple. And I guess if you're going for kind of like a, uh, a children's storybook type of look, I think that may be fine. But if you're looking to get into higher tier illustration, maybe even concept design, then you're going to have to work on keeping things looking fresh and dynamic. And so that's what I'm kind of doing now. I'm kind of doing some spot treatment in terms of bringing in that light, in terms of uh, where can we use to point that light and to bring up areas of interest. Where we do have them, of course, we can lead the viewer's eye using those spots of light to that focal point, which is that water dragon. And so I get the, the blue was kind of not working for me in the water. I want things to feel very cerulean, very nice. I recommend taking a look at this, this photo reference pack right here on proref.com. It seems like it'd be the perfect fit for you. It's just a few dollars, and I think you'd get a lot of mileage out of it, at least on this one piece alone. So now again, this needs a lot more of the more important, the structural detail. So there's like sandbars, there's depth of water, there's reflections, there's refraction of light. Rather than getting in there and getting like every little blade of grass kind of textured with a, you know, very same brush and stuff, focus on the larger things at hand. You see, I'm not, and then to kind of illustrate that I'm not focusing on those small things either, I'm just picking random brushes out of this already too large set that I have, and I'm just trying to fill in the, the larger shapes of things. And I'm trying to sculpt these landmasses. I'm trying to sculpt the forms in your scene. 
And we, we know that yeah, we're going to have a, a dragon, the water dragon, or a serpent here. So I was kind of leaving that blank for now. And now I'm kind of just going to get in there and quickly touch upon maybe how I'd handle it. Uh, overall, I you know, for, if it was me, if it was my piece, I would have chosen a much lower fo you know horizon line. I would have gazed up at the magnificent or the, you know, the majesticness of this creature. When we do have an angle like this, it, it is kind of keeping us separate. We're not even in the perspective of one of the characters up in the trees, one of your fairies. Uh, they're we're way you know a step ahead of them and they're even the same size you know in terms of the figure in the canvas so it's it is diminishing the importance of this water dragon and the serpents of it yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying sometimes I'm overtired I got an infant it, we're, we're de-emphasizing the importance of that water dragon by having these fairies which are in general are kind of small be the same size of it so if this was my my comp and I was to redo this in, you know entirely from scratch, I would have something so the emphasis is on the size and how majestic it is. There, I think I worded it a little bit better that time. Ugh. Anyways, yeah, now again, rather than focusing on each individual little piece of bark as you have reference down there, I mean, that's a good enough reference, and I, I, but you got to focus on the larger shapes, on the flow of the paint struck, and on your basically your brush efficiency. Maybe that's something I could talk more about. You guys, let me know if you think that is something I could touch upon. But this little tangent here, having that main brush, uh, the branch, <laughs> be right underneath that serpent, as well as kind of not lining up as dynamic as I'd like them to. So I'd want more flowing kind of branches coming in, leading the viewer's eye right into the scene. And then afterwards, if you have... If you have room in the composition, you know, in storytelling, you then kind of see, all right, maybe I could put a fairy here or there. Again, this is very crude. I'm not, these aren't kind of finished foliage shapes, but that's kind of how you want to begin to think about them. Really kind of thick and clumpy and, again, reference them. But you want to show, if this is a densely forested or jungle type of area, there, there are going to be shrubs, there's going to be all kinds, there won't have a freshly mowed piece of grass like in your original. It just felt way too uniform and, and almost too much like a golf course. Jungles are loose, they're wild, they're organic, and they're untamed. And you want to show that with the roots, the bushes, the branches, the trees. Kind of like I just showing there, like everything is just clumping and lumping all over the place. There's vines going in and around the trees. And, and that's how you kind of want to sell this as, as an image. Now, just as a brief kind of last minute side note, if you wanted to add form again to some of these trees, just make quick selections. Get in there and show that light hitting them and you know delicately in a few different places. And I feel like that 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 word in terms of technique in regards to the scope of this image you know delicately things are kind of just handled a little too uh brashly in in places we want to just you know as i tried to show with the atmosphere delicately approach the light and kind of gingerly handle how that atmosphere is affecting different parts and elements in your scene again too because you want to paint the important things with showing the least amount of detail everywhere else that's what i definitely would recommend and of course, if you get to a point where you're happy with things and you do want to push and glaze more light and atmosphere into a thing, I think that would be the time. Do it kind of at this point if you can get the image to structurally hold up in terms of everything else. All right, sorry, I'm back. My uh, infant spit up all over me, had to change clothes. And yeah, I kind of pushed things forward a few minutes. I forgot to hit record. But anyway, I'm progressing with things here. Uh, I'm still trying to paint with atmosphere, and when I'm doing things like that, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think about uh, mood and uh, feelings, and sometimes you just gotta paint kind of raw with your gut, rather than just jumping in there and work, you know, is this how a leaf looks, or you know, what is the structure of a rock, and just kind of you can hear, <laughs> you can hear my dog and infant, they kind of get each other working upstairs. I apologize, this is how it is. But I wanted to talk more about the focal point, this water dragon here. It's going to need more attention, more detail, and more design work to it. Uh, what I'm doing is not enough, and it wouldn't be enough without spending kind of hours kind of meticulously kind of going over its design and working out the materials, but it does feel underbaked, and you'd want to go back and figure out some more specifics in regards to that. I mean, it's, it's a solid enough start, it's, a, it's an alright idea. But yeah, it's just going to need some more. 
And you know, I played with the idea of putting mix different different mixed size stones in the water, showing the again the the, the body of the uh, the dragon underneath the water. So I'm painting it darker there. And yeah, just creating a little bit more density here with that foliage. And I thought it'd be good to have some brighter lights or, or atmosphere coming through the thicket of the trees in the background, because that's almost like an exit point for the viewer's eye and the flow and momentum of your piece. It's always good to have different exits and entrances and to create that flow in and out of your painting to make it feel ultimately uh, really dynamic and kind of fluid. Uh -huh. Yeah, it, I'm just quickly making selections around some of these branches just to kind of get the hard shapes in there because you, you definitely would want them, but yeah, th those would again need to be referenced and uh, kind of articulated a bit more. Now, as we have your design here, this main branch with the fairy and that water dragon are roughly the same size and they're almost on that same level in terms of like a horizontal plane. I, you'd want to stagger that and make one dominating over the other in terms of the general size. But yeah, I've just, it's basically done at this point. Let me know guys if you think we, we kind of move things forward with it. Uh, do you have any other suggestions, of course, for, for the piece to, uh, to put into consideration? But yeah, thank you all, of course, for watching and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching, particularly if you made it to the end here. If you'd like to support the channel, please like, share, and comment. You can find me on Facebook, ArtStation, and Instagram. Now, I share different content on each platform, so feel free to stalk me across the web. Feel free to join the Brush Sauce community as linked below. We do hangouts, have a Discord channel, host challenges, and support each other in artistic growth. Finally, if you'd like to inquire about my one-on-one -on -one mentorship program, head over to tyleredlinart.com, click on the mentorship tab for information, and shoot me an email. Also, I run two courses at the Computer Graphics Master Academy. Feel free to check out those as well. Take care.